So when I talk to people about creating an online course, they're often worried because they think they're going to have to do face to camera like this. And for many of us, me included, that's really daunting. While the tech isn't difficult, because as long as you've got a sort of good smartphone, you've probably got a good enough camera, it's really difficult to teach online. And you know, if you've got nervous ticks or anything like that, it all comes up on camera. So what I wanted to show you today is the different types of format you can use to create your content for your online course quickly, easily and effectively and without having to be face to camera at any stage. So let's dive in. Okay, so now let's dive in. I'm going to give you a quick run through of the type of formats that perhaps you, there's some, there'll be some you know and there'll be some that maybe you haven't considered if you're creating an online course. And the great thing is, of course, you get to choose. You are in control. It's your course. You get to decide what, which formats you use. And there are multiple options. There's low budget, medium budget, and you can go super high budget, but we're not going to look at those. Um, and you can mix it up. What I like to do is pick a mixture of different styles and formats for my courses. And that's what I suggest my students do as well. And find what works for you. Now, the traditional and my favourite and chosen for any um level of uh, course creator whether you're a beginner or advanced is a slide deck uh, presentation style so most of us have access to powerpoint or keynote and so what it involves is creating a series of presentations and talking over the slide and recording what you're doing on screen so it's fantastic because the advantages are it's really good for the camera show you don't have to do any face to camera stuff um, it's a format that your viewer will may may well be used to. If they've done courses before, a lot of the top course creators use this format, so they'll be used to it and they will enjoy it. Um, and it's a good budget option. You really don't need very much. You've probably got most of the things you need. I would suggest you get an external mic, um, and I can give you recommendations for those if you're interested in that, uh, but it doesn't have to be expensive at all. The disadvantages are it can feel a little less personal than face to camera, but that's a small price to pay. And of course, you could add small bits of face to camera in to create that personal interaction. Then of course there is face to camera. That's what a lot of people think of when I say to them, have you considered creating an online course? They often say to me, oh, but I don't like to be on camera. Um, and that's why I do like to explain all the different options. But face to camera is certainly an option for some people. The advantages are it does create a very personal interaction. There's no doubt about that. If you do it right, it's very, very personal. You know, it feels like someone's talking directly to you and it can be engaging. But that entirely depends on your presenting skills, because the disadvantage is if you're not comfortable on camera, it will be very uncomfortable for both you and anyone viewing it. If you're determined to do face to camera and you're not yet a very good presenter, of course you can learn and you can practice. Um, and that's, that's what I'd suggest. You must practice, practice, practice. And of course, lighting and setting is very important. So it can be a slightly more expensive option um, because you're going to need more equipment. You will at the very least need a good smartphone camera, but often you'll need to upgrade relatively quickly to a good digital camera. And for vanity purposes, you probably want to get some good lighting because it can look awful if it's dark and you haven't got good lighting. Although if you're lucky and you've got good natural lighting in areas of your home, you can probably make it work if you're on a budget. Now screen share uh, with a face to camera tab, as you can see here, is a lovely option that kind of balances out both. So you could have your sort of talking head in the corner when you're sharing your screen, whether it's a sort of slide deck presentation or if you're sharing what's happening on your screen. Now, the advantage of this is it really does create that personal interaction just as you have with face to camera and it can be more engaging than just slides. And it's lower budget, you know, because you're not having to worry about the background and making the lighting look right. Um, and you don't have to get a camera or a special smartphone. You can often just use the camera that's on your computer or an existing webcam. Um, as I said, lighting and background is not as critical as it is if you're having a sort of full screen camera job. The disadvantages are you still need to be comfortable on screen. I have seen some very interesting uh, variations on this with people who are obviously not comfortable and they kind of forget that you can see what they're doing in that corner. Um, and it can be really, really distracting, particularly if someone's not, not good at it. So don't overuse it. Um, 
Okay, now there's some other great formats I'm just gonna run through quickly. Obviously, this is something I can go more in depth with you if you're one of my students, but I just wanted to give you some inspiration if you're just watching this now. Um, there's the traditional screen share. That's where you share what's happening on your screen. So at the beginning, we looked at sort of sharing a slide presentation, but this would be, for instance, if you are teaching someone how to do Facebook advertising, you might need to show them how to set up their Facebook business account or how to set up their ads, all those things. And you would need to show them how to do it on screen. And that's a traditional screen share. And it's a very good way of teaching those kind of practical lessons. Whiteboard, uh, this is lovely Brendan Richard, he uses this a lot. If you are a good presenter, this is takes you back to sort of almost formal teaching styles because that's what we're used to seeing in schools or lecture halls. Um, and that can work very well if you are comfortable at presenting in that way. And then this one I've put in for fun. Um, obviously you would have it used showing up the whole screen, but I've just added this to the slide deck that I'm showing you. This is where you could actually share what you're doing on your iPad, which gives you the freedom to do drawings, to do presentations. Um, the disadvantages of this and why you won't see many of these in my courses is that you have to have nice handwriting. And as you will see here, my handwriting is horrible. Um, but if you've got nice handwriting, if, you, you, if you're drawing, I mean, it'd be very good if you were teaching an art course or something like that, but it's also good for explaining sort of complex sequences and things like that. It's nice to be able to draw it out on, um, on the screen. So that's a really good option. But how do you choose which format is right for you? Well, find a format that suits you and the content you are presenting. What's the best way you think to get that particular point across? So the decision might be very easy. If you're trying to teach someone how to set up a Facebook account, the, the sort of example I gave you earlier, it would be very difficult to teach you in any other way than actually sharing your screen and showing the process step by step. You could take screenshots and put them into a slide deck, but it's preferable probably to share your screen. So sometimes the decision will be easy to make. But you also need to think about the format that you are comfortable with. I personally could never do a whole course face to camera. I'm extremely uncomfortable on camera and it'd be extremely uncomfortable for someone watching me for a whole um, course on camera. But I'm okay doing a little bit of that. I prefer doing slideshows like this. And what do you have the budget for right now? You might be the most engaging presenter on the planet, but perhaps you do not have the budget for, the, at the very least, a smartphone with a decent camera, or even better, sort of a, a digital camera and some lighting. So that might not be an option for you currently, and that's fine. Just start with what you have the budget for. And very important, you really need to think about what works well for who you're aiming this course at. Think about how they might like to learn. Think about what's going to be the easiest way for them to digest what they want, what you're trying to teach. Okay. So I hope that's inspired you and shown you how many different ways there are to present your content and teach online and create a really professional looking and effective online course.